call the HRA to order. Roll call. Brent Mullen. Here. Jalali. Here. Naker. Here. Prince. Here. Tao. Here. Tolbert. Here. Yang. Here. Seven present, zero absent. Item number one, MIN 22-5, approving the minutes of the January 2022 HRA meetings. A motion from uh, Commissioner Yang. Roll call, please. Brent Mullen. Aye. Jalali. Aye. Naker. Aye. Prince. Aye. Tao. Aye. Yang. Aye. Chair Tobert. Yes. Seven in favor, none opposed. The minutes are approved. Item number two, resolution 22-292, amending the 2022 Housing and Redevelopment Authority spending and, and financing plans to record cost neutral changes and carry forward adjustments citywide. Director Goodman. Thank you, Chair Tolbert, commissioners. This item is necessary because of a couple of programs that were added at the very end of the budget cycle. And in the quick turnaround to add those programs, there was an accounting error in the carry forward number. The two programs added just for reference were the program to expand pedestrian and bicycle safety investments for $250,000 and the graffiti and plywood abatement program for $100,000. This item corrects that error in the carry forward number and makes a couple of additional necessary budget neutral cleanup adjustments. This item will also go to city council today and staff recommends approval of the item. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, a motion to approve from Commissioner Naker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Seven in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item number three, resolution 22-293, approving and authorizing a temporary license agreement with Black Heart of St. Paul LLC for initial, an initial term of one year to use a portion of HRA-owned property located at 1433 University Avenue West, District 11, Ward 4. Director Goodman. <coughs> Thank you, Chair Tolbert. Commissioners, this item is to authorize a temporary, again, license agreement with Blackheart for an initial term of one year to use a portion of HRA-owned property at 1433 University Avenue West to install and maintain a bike rack for use by the general public. The temporary license agreement includes the option to renew on a year-to-year -year basis until the HRA parcel is sold for development purposes. As the primary goal of the parcel is redevelopment, the license agreement will include a termination clause with a 30-day notice. And staff recommends approval of the item. Questions or comments? Yeah. Commissioner Jalal? Um, just appreciate bringing the bike storage infrastructure here and I guess look forward to more karaoke at Blackheart in the coming year. Karaoke. <laughs> 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 oh, there's karaoke there. You didn't know? I didn't know. Oh my God. <laughs> there's karaoke at the Blackheart. You have to know about it. <laughs> Sounds like you guys have an outing planned. Uh, a motion to approve Commissioner Jalali. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Seven in favor, none opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item number four, SR 22-28, PED Planning Division Update. Director Thank you, Chair Tolbert. Commissioners, Planning Director Luis Pereira is here today to bring an update from the Planning Department. You should have received uh, a presentation too, just a, a little bit in advance, not as normal as, not as far ahead as usual because we kind of snuck this in um, at the last minute, but I think, I think you hopefully had time to look over it. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Tolbert and, and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Luis Pereira. I'm the Planning Director in PED. Uh, and uh, I have a bit of an update uh, today for uh, you about the uh, planning team's work. Um, so we're actually, this is well-timed because it's uh, the time of year that we do the annual report for the previous year, uh, the Planning Commission does. And um, we're in the uh, mode of uh, looking back, evaluating how we did last year, and also looking at our 2022 work program. So I'll talk about both, both of those components today. And I'm just gonna be highlighting a few things. Um, so that's the agenda. First, I wanted to mention our team. So we've had some uh, hiring going on on the team. Um, we've actually added three new staff recently. So Marin Rose, Marilyn Rosendahl, joined last June, uh, right around the time I last uh, spoke with you, I believe. Um, we also hired uh, Spencer Johnson as a senior city planner um, in December, and Victor White is the latest addition. He's a, our second city planning tech who just recently joined, uh, focusing on environmental review and the zoning counter functions. Uh, just a re uh, reminder, uh, these are kind of our work areas within the planning team. Uh, 
you know, sort of functional areas, so everything from comprehensive planning to uh, transportation planning with more of a focus on, on transit and, and other kind of uh, mobility improvements. We work closely with the Public Works Transportation Planning Division, Ruben Collins and team, um, zoning studies, uh, neighborhood planning, so large redevelopment sites, but also district planning, um, as well as research and mapping. Um, and of course, uh, legally mandated zoning and regulatory review, including environmental review. So both HUD funded projects as well as uh, environmental review uh, as required by the state of Minnesota. And, you know, occasionally we're involved with some of the transportation environmental review. Uh, typically that's more public works, but um, we do get a little bit involved. Okay, so um, kind of the first uh, looking back at how we did in 21 sort of highlights. Um, we uh, started the um, uh, work on the Riverview Station Area Planning uh, process. Um, so working with uh, the county, um, there, uh, there is a task force working on station area planning uh, with a planning commissioner co-chair. And that's, that's really a great thing because then all, everything they come up with will um, be able to be brought to the planning commission in terms of um, actual plan amendments um, for those station areas. So really um, all of the new stations are in St. Paul um, on, on this line. Um, and you can see them there in purple. Um, uh, a few things they've been doing lately. Um, actually, our, our co-chair, um, uh, we're actually in, in a, a period where um, we're going to switch. So we have a, a new co-chair, Commissioner Wendy Underwood will be stepping up. Commissioner Kristen Grill did a great job. Um, we also works for the county, so um, there was a question there about that, but she's generally done a great job. Um, so Wendy will be, Commissioner Underwood will be starting soon. Um, as, uh, along with a uh, business owner. Um, the task force is looking at demographics um, and other guiding principles along the corridor. Um, they most recently did surveys of St. Clair, Randolph, and Otto station areas, so getting community opinion about those areas and a variety of different ideas came up. You know, better pedestrian access, um, better crossing, things like that. Um, there was also a Section 106 community meeting in December um, so starting to think about some of the, the historic uh, components of the corridor. Um, you know, it's a built up corridor, so um, we, uh, the station area planning group will be thinking about um, some redevelopment opportunities, but you know, in, in many cases, it's a lot of small businesses and industrial businesses um, and housing that's there already. So how do we support that? Uh, and, and you know, obviously continue to look forward and prepare the corridor for uh, better transit service. Um, another highlight this year was met the Metro B line corridor um, plan was adopted uh, by the Met Council. Um, so the stop locations are there on the left hand side. Um, uh, you know, m stations along Marshall as well as Selby. Um, you know, I've highlighted a few there in yellow, uh, recycled an image, but um, just so far as there's a lot of work going on in this area, uh, Reconnect Rondo is, is engaged with the community. Um, we have, you know, Summit University also had done some district planning in the area. Um, the RAISE grant, which we'll talk about in a minute, the Public Works was able to secure. Um, there's a lot of uh, great connections that can be made with this, with this transit corridor uh, in the Rondo and uh, Summit U area. Um, and lastly, uh, this is not news to any of you here, but um, in part based on city input, uh, we as a city were successful in, in convincing the Met Council to select two of the next three BRT corridors in St. Paul. So Rice Robert as the G line and Como Maryland as the H line. So every, everything from the east side to the north end uh, to west of there, St. Anthony Park uh, would be uh, as part of the, the, that H line. So uh, thanks to the council, thanks to the mayor, thanks to our transportation committee, the planning commission and staff, uh, we, we, were, we were successful on that front. Um, on the neighborhood planning area, um, uh, a, big, a big highlight this year was um, getting to a, a Hillcrest master plan draft. And I say draft because it hasn't, uh, we, we are just about to have the public hearing at the Planning Commission. So we're excited about that. It's been out there for, I want to say 40, 40 something days um, for public review. Um, we have uh, been doing kind of a road trip. Uh, presenting, we were just at Greater East Side uh, last week to talk about it. Uh, we've talked to uh, American Indians in Action, 
Uh, we talked to at least one or two other groups, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Parks Commission, not to forget. Uh, so uh, you'll be seeing a uh, Parks Commission recommendation from them very soon as part of that. And then of course the public hearing at the Planning Commission, so city uh, resident input about uh, elements of the plan. Um, and so obviously Planning Commission will do their process um, and eventually we'll come to you all for uh, consideration as well uh, and, and associated actions. So rezoning um, and, and a uh, couple of uh, amendments, zoning and comp plan. Um, we worked closely with uh, Reconnect Rondo this year or this past year on a, um, a series of workshops that ULI led. Um, they were calling them sort of the 4P um, model workshop. 4P is uh, people, uh, it's, it's public, private, philanthropic, and people. So four Ps, typically we think of three Ps. Um, and really trying to give that a little bit more content, build that out, those, some of those concepts. Um, that work was great and it has uh, led into sort of this new phase of Reconnect Rondo um, in trying to get a little bit more concrete in terms of um, not only how does this uh, land bridge work physically, infrastructure wise, but also what kind of development uh, real estate development opportunities are there created as part of that, both on or near the bridge, right in the close proximity to it, and maybe the broader neighborhood as well. Um, Reconnect Rondo is working on African American cultural uh, district as part of this. Um, our team uh, work closely, about the planning and economic development teams and PED work closely with um, uh, Reconnect Rondo, um, a consultant for Reconnect Rondo to put together a grant application for um, Met Council uh, pre-development funds to support exploration of um, anti-displacement tools, as well as um, uh, sort of right of return policy, um, uh, various other components that, uh, you know, mechanisms, mechanisms by which um, value that's created on the, on the, on, with real estate development could be um, flowing back to the broader area and, and the original and Rondo stakeholders uh, that are there today. So that is uh, an exciting grant that's just getting underway with um, a consultant. My understanding is Reconnect Rondo is, has somebody in mind to work with, um, and we would be um, uh, working with them closely as well. Um, and then uh, the other highlight here on this slide is um, there's been a study going on. Public Works is, has a consultant. Um, this has kind of been a, a collaboration um, on a um, below the bluffs is what I like to call uh, uh, this area. Um, uh, on the west side, um, so thinking um, in particular west of Wabasha, uh, sort of south of Harriet Island area, uh, but also a little bit broad, broader than that, a little bit east of, of Wabasha as well, thinking about getting into the west side flats area um, and understanding what is our current sanitary sewer capacity. Um, we've found out that, um, we, you know, even though we just fairly recently upgraded the lift station, the Riverview lift station, there are still capacity constraints. And when you're thinking about, um, on, you know, on the private market side, there's development pressure to redevelop some lower intensity land uses to higher intensity housing. Um, that creates, you know, uh, sewer demand. Um, we do have some constraints there. So getting a technical um, engineering firm, SEH, on board to study that, they've come up with some preliminary um, uh, understanding of, of the capacity as well as some design options for improving the area. And so there's some choices that the city will have to make about what option do we, do we go with? Um, you know, what are the costs of that? Um, what are the, the finance mechanisms to, uh, to support those improvements? How much of that can be, um, you know, sort of spread around the district, so, you know, so that way multiple property owners um, are, that benefit would also be paying into that system. And then, um, and how do we actually do the, the construction of that? So that's gonna take a little bit of time, but um, we are uh, optimistic about that. The very small map on the west, on the left side of the screen is hard to read, but it is actually um, a technical map from our comprehensive plan that shows you um, essentially some of that sanitary sewer infrastructure. So some of the lift stations are on that map um, and, and so on. So it's, it's kind of interesting to look at that more closely. Um, a few other things this year, this last year, zoning studies. So the parking uh, study resulted in uh, the elimination of minimum parking requirements. Again, that's not a, a news item to you, but just uh, reflecting on that. Um, the homeless services zoning study 
land use definition and standards were adopted. And um, uh, staff worked uh, within sort of the whole of PED on an anti-displacement and community wealth bu building RFP um, and released that and received uh, proposals um, from which we, we have been able to select a consultant team uh, that we're working with right now. Um, it's, it's a fairly big um, scope. Um, everything from regulatory approaches, like inclusionary zoning, uh, we knew about the results, uh, sort of anticipated the results of the, of the rent stabilization um, uh, vote, but then when it became a real thing, you know, sort of understanding that it's going to be more important for us to look at that more closely as, as part of the scope. Um, leveraging TIF or, or things like tax abatement for anti-displacement ends. So we use TIF throughout the city. How can we, um, you know, maybe are there, are there ways we can better employ, employ it for um, anti-displacement and, and, and community wealth building ends? Um, HRA land disposition, is there anything that we might want to do differently on, on that side of things? Um, and then commercial and small bu business tools. This is a piece that we hope doesn't get crowded out by the other kind of regulatory work, but we hope we can still um, find some budget to support um, some things like, you know, cooperatives for businesses or tenants being able to purchase their own buildings, um, especially in areas with rising rents. Um, we completed an RF, RFQ um, for an investment tracking system and, re and received uh, five responses. Um, three of them were, were, under our understanding, were, three were in budget. Um, uh, so we, uh, this is actually going to inform now uh, an RFP, very similar to uh, an RFQ, but now we can actually, it, uh, we're required to do this in order to actually entertain any of these proposals uh, more seriously. And so we anticipate, while any entity could respond to it, um, that you know, we would anticipate that these three that um, responded previously to the RFQ would, would respond. And my understanding is that um, is very close to being released um, anytime now over the next few weeks um, to move us forward on that front. And then um, this is something that I want to um, really highlight the housing team, but also the work of uh, former planner Menika Mohan. Before she left, she was instrumental in getting um, uh, sort of an agreement set up, uh, finding a trainer, working with our housing team to um, launch the emerging and BIPOC developers uh, training uh, sort of uh, curriculum and, 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 and initiative. Um, and so now, actually, as of uh, January 25th, uh, there's a five-week boot, boot camp. Um, we're probably getting closer to the end of it now, um, in which we have um, participants in that um, educational content, um, course homework, small group support sessions, one-on-one uh, -on -one support from industry experts. At the end of this uh, boot camp, attendees will be fully prepared to submit um, for a future city RFP for things like uh, inspiring communities um, towards the end of it. So. Uh, that, that is an exciting piece uh, that's moving forward. Um, so 2022, some highlights for this year's work program. Um, we have begun to participate in the county-led um, Purple Line, formerly known as Rush Line, stationary planning process. Um, so uh, Emma Siegworth is, is uh, involved with that on our team, uh, uh, with the county leading that. Of course, it doesn't just involve St. Paul. In this case, we've got multiple suburban communities involved as well. Uh, perhaps with a little more redevelopment potential than, than in, in St. Paul, but uh, important for us to, to stay at the table. I mentioned the RAISE planning grant uh, that Public Works was able to secure, uh, and this is um, really focused on Rondo. Um, so public engagement, sort of a broad scope, um, concept design work. Uh, it's really all about mobility. Um, that probably doesn't come across in this description here, but um, mobility analysis, how, does, how can... Uh, not just, we're not just going to um, uh, repave or redo uh, St. Anthony and Concordia, but how do we actually leverage some of those sorts of investments to improve the mobility um, network for the area and engage uh, the Rana community there? And so we would be in a support role uh, to, to Public Works. Um, they're going to put out an RFP as well. It's a pretty significant um, grant. Um, on the neighbor, neighborhood planning, um, we um, have been working on the Snelling Midway uh, environmental review update, so the AUAR update. Uh, every five years, um, uh, AUAR has to be updated to, to remain in uh, current. And so um, that is very close. Uh, we are uh, now just moving that back to the consultant to, to finalize the formatting and uh, will be uh, released shortly. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned the Hillcrest Master Plan um, that um, we're moving forward at the Planning Commission City Council 
uh, this year in, prep, in beginnings of the site prep for development. Other items, so again, anti-displacement work, that uh, scope is uh, uh, being finalized now. HRNA is the lead and NEO Partners is uh, a subconsultant working on engagement and economic development pieces of that. Um, so again, looking at things like inclusionary zoning, feasibility, uh, small business supports. Um, the one to four unit housing study, uh, which again, that isn't a new project to you, but phase two, it's a broader look at the zoning code. How could we um, make more of our city that's single family residential, open that up to more housing opportunity and get, you know, getting into the weeds of the code and how, does, how do we enable that and, and create a system that makes sense for St. Paul um, to facilitate greater housing options, both rental and ownership. And then um, the, the MRCA, the Mississippi River Critical Area Regulations, uh, this is a project that's been out there for a while. Been a, a bit of a delay um, due to the fact that um, in addition to the ordinance itself, we have to have certain regulatory permit um, pieces ready and a lot of those pieces um, tend to be within DSI's scope. Um, and so um, uh, gonna be working closely with them to get those pieces ready. There'll be some educational pieces for landowners as well. Um, uh, Wes Saunders Pierce, our former water resources coordinator did a lot of great work before he left. So hoping now we have a new, now that we have a new water resources coordinator that we'll be able to work with, uh, with him um, to, to keep that moving forward. Um, and then obviously the Planning Commission City Council process. Um, and then finally, um, last year, um, the Planning Commission initiated a uh, industrial zoning study um, that is really uh, focused on um, our industrial districts and um, what is the intent? Um, how can we better support uh, industrial uses, um, continue to build our tax base, to continue to make these areas um, uh, vital, important parts of our city for employment, and um, also think about uses that may be less compatible, and are there different sorts of regulations that um, we may want to consider, um, you know, for uses that may not be as core to the intent of those districts. So things like institutional uses, um, uh, schools, um, charter schools has come up quite a bit, I believe, um, but schools more generally um, in that, um, you know, certain uses might be permitted throughout the city and do they really always need to be uh, uh, sort of permitted in core industrial areas or are there certain standards that we might want to look for as part of that review? Be before you move on, oh, it was yep. the last page anyway, so. <laughs> what is the timeline on the um, Mississippi River critical area overlay? I know there's some state timeline and when is the deadline for us to get that done? Uh, yep. Uh, Chair Tolbert, the timeline is um, something that I'm trying to figure out myself uh, okay. <laughs> right now. Part of this has been this transition. Um, uh, in addition to the water resources coordinator being uh, vacant for a little bit, um, you know, the deputy uh, over there, uh, we've had meetings with, um, you know, sort of the permit uh, side of things. And part of the question on the DSI side is, you know, while they understand we're required to do this as a city, um, how does that, does their related work fall within the priorities in terms of limited time? And um, so I think getting, you know, um, you know these new positions um, onboarded and, and sort of getting their head around this project will help us. Um, the, the actual ordinance itself is pretty, pretty close uh, to being done. I mean, we've, we've shared the, the draft with the DNR. Uh, they've essentially weighed in uh, with it. Um, there is some time and considerations with, you know, we can't go too far without having some of those permit pieces figured out. And so um, I would like to see this moving forward this year. It's been, you know, several years, as you know, um, that this has been out there. Um, so um, I would like to nail that down a little bit better uh, in the near future. And I can share that with you if that's of interest. Yeah, that'd be great. Obviously, it's something we've been watching or reacting, I suppose reacting to maybe is a better way to put it, uh, since they passed that in, what was it, 2017, 2018 maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, all right, yeah. Any, that was the end of your presentation, right? Yes, yeah. um, okay. the only other thing is, if you'd like to see the whole work program, it, uh, the link is here, that's hard for anybody watching this to, to copy down quickly, but 
It's also on our Planning Commission website. I think it's the second, the first meeting of February, February 4th. It's posted there so people can find it. Um, but if you, ha you have this PDF, so you can also click on that link. Um, so yeah, so you can see the whole, the whole thing. Um, and also note that, I mentioned this earlier, you'll also be receiving uh, soon the Planning Commission annual report from 2021, which is a little bit of different take on last year um, sort of achievements. Great. Thank you very much. I did see a couple of hands up. Commissioner Prince, I saw. Um, I see that you mentioned Boys Totem Town as a down the line project. I know the county was having meetings on it. Is there any update at all on, on that? Yes, thank you, uh, Commissioner Prince. Um, we uh, been recently reached out to the county to ask, you know, we, we've got a new planner in the area. Uh, Spencer Johnson is, has assigned D1, District 1. Um, and so, you know, what, what's, the, what's the update? What's the thinking? Um, you know, there's been some community interest in, in trying to find money for a cultural resources study, which was recommended by a previous study, uh, that, that that be done. Um, the county uh, would like would like to to meet I think soon. Um, they're still um, I think like the city a little bit overwhelmed with some of the um, the ARP uh, related funding um, and program design and launching and all that. So uh, I get the sense that they're probably they'd like to be further along than they are in terms of that process. But um, they they have said that they would like to meet with us soon. Um, so. Um, that, that's my sort of non-update update, but uh, <laughs> at least we've checked in with them to see. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Chair Tolbert, uh, I'll just add that Luis is humble. The, the elimination of parking minimums in St. Paul was a huge deal and received national recognition and attention. So I want to I wanna just add that and also just say that, that Travis and I, Travis, Deputy Director Travis Vistadu and I are consistently so impressed with Luis and the team that he has built um, and his leadership of that team. They're all talented and dedicated um, and so responsive to the administration and to the electeds and to the community. Um, so I just, I wanna say that the, the past couple of years is, has been chaotic for PED in general and, and the planning division is like, runs like a well-oiled machine. So we, we, I just wanna recognize you and appreciate you for, for your leadership um, in that department. That's what I'll add. Thank you, Luis. Yeah, thank you very much. And I will say the flow chart was helpful to see in one place. I've, it's probably passed my eyes before, but it helped me put everyone that we come across in different mm -hmm. contexts. It was helpful for me as, as we work. So thanks for adding that to the PowerPoint. Any other comments or questions? If not, thank you for putting this together. We appreciate it and look forward to working with you and uh, your team as we move forward. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else to come before the HRA?